Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, going through the Bible, verse by verse, as always. We come today to Jeremiah chapter 14, beginning in verse number 1. Study all of God's Word with me anytime you want to, as much as you want to, at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that's found at thebibleversebyverse.com. There you will find four complete series going through every verse of the Bible, going back 38 years, including this fifth one, which is brings us actually to Jeremiah 14 in the Old Testament. The New Testament is already completed. It's all there for you at thebibleversebyverse.com, where all you ever need is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. That's at thebibleversebyverse.com. So check it out today. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Jeremiah 14, verse 1. The word of the Lord <clears throat> that came to Jeremiah concerning the drought Judah mourns, and its gates languish. They mourn for the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem has gone up. Things were not good in Israel, and that would include a famine, which is what God is talking about here. And all these bad things were a part of God's judgment because his people sinned, and mostly because they refused to repent. God hears his people crying, according to verse 2. Judah mourneth. He sees their misery. It is a horrible time. But that's what happens when people sin and refuse to repent. You're looking at it. This is also exactly what God said would happen. He warned them ahead of time many, many times. Three. And their nobles have sent their little ones for water. They came to the cisterns and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. They couldn't figure out why they didn't even have the essentials. And you would think that it would click with them. It was all because they rebelled against God, especially since God warned them ahead of time that this is the kind of stuff that would happen. And Jeremiah continues to talk to them about it. But God said in his word to them, from the very beginning, that if they turned away from him and if they got involved in sin and they refused to repent, if they started worshiping idols, which, which are things that every single one of those things, that's exactly what they've been doing. And he warned them. He said, you start doing that, there's going to come a time when you're not going to have food, you're not going to have water. All they have to do is compare their lifestyle with the Word of God to know why all this stuff is happening. And yet sinners, so blinded by their sin, refuse to see and eventually can't see. It just, can, this cycle just continues to work it off, work itself out, not just in Israel, but in all societies. Well, verse 5, Yea, the hind also calved in the field and forsook it, because there was no grass. In other words, even the animals couldn't take care of their young. Six. And the wild donkeys did stand in the high places. They sniffed at the wind like jackals. Their eyes did fail, because there was no grass. 
so animals and people couldn't find anything to eat. Seven, O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do it for your name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against you. So this is a horrible famine. It's tough to look at. And as a result, Jeremiah, the man of God, who has been standing alone, proclaiming the word of God, telling the truth, who has been preaching the pure word of God while all other so-called prophets were preaching lies to make the people feel good, he begins to pray for his people. Eight, oh, the hope of Israel, its savior in time of trouble. Why should you be as a stranger in the land and as a wayfaring man that turns aside to tarry for a night. Jeremiah is also wondering why such a loving God is not helping. Jeremiah knows the answer to that question because God has told him. But it's hard to see this. Nine, why should you be as a man confused, as a mighty man, that cannot save. Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Leave us not. Jeremiah says, God, you are acting as if you cannot do anything. It's not that God could not do anything. It was that God's justice was keeping him from rescuing these people because they have to pay for their sins. The people were crying because of their suffering. The problem was they were not sorry for their sins. They didn't care about God. They only cared about themselves. They didn't care about the fact that they had sinned against a good and holy God. Instead, they cared only that they were suffering the consequences of their sin. Jeremiah, on the other hand, cared about God. He cared about God's reputation, too. And he cared about the people as well. And what made Jeremiah so sad was that things were so bad that it seemed as if God had left town. And Jeremiah can't bear the thought of that. 10. Thus says the Lord unto his people. Thus have they loved to wander they have not restrained their feet, therefore the Lord does not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and punish their sins. So right on the heels of this prayer, Jeremiah then immediately receives a word from God. Thus they have loved to wander, God says to him. The people had been wandering away from God for a long, long time. They simply took off and went in the direction of sin. And there were no restraints because the preachers did not preach the word of God. But God never punishes without warning. And you and I have his warning in the written word of God, just like they did. And if that's not enough, then even a dream at night will be explained away. If that happens to you, if God gives you a dream warning you or a vision warning you, you'll explain that away too. If the word of God isn't enough to convince you, then nothing will. No sort of experience will. And God always warns, hey, I'm going to visit your sins, which means that he's going to punish them. It will happen because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he did to Israel, he will do to America and any other place. God will behave in the present and in the future just as he has behaved in the past when it comes to punishing sinners. Just because he hasn't done it yet, you see, doesn't mean that he will not do it. Don't be deceived. This is a wake-up call. What we're seeing here, what happened to Israel because of how they were, that's a wake-up call for all people out there who are living in sin, who are rejecting the written word of God. Verse 11, Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good, 
Boy, that's when you know you've gone way too far. When God says, don't pray for this people. Jeremiah, I don't even want to hear a prayer for them. Don't even talk to me about them. That is a frightening situation to be in. It's so nice if you're going through hard times to be able to say, pray for me. And then also to pray to God yourself and to know that God hears you. But for God to say, don't even talk to me in the midst of trouble, that's a scary situation. And God said that because they had abandoned him such a long time ago. And instead of responding with repentance, they just went deeper and deeper into their sin. Their heart was so hard that they couldn't even repent anymore. And that's the reason why God was saying, don't pray for them. You're just wasting your breath. Because God will not help anyone. No matter how many, no matter how many prayers are, are offered for someone, God's not going to help them if they don't repent. And that's always a choice. 12. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. When they offer a burnt offering and a grain offering, I will not accept them but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. God says that they can go through all their religious activities and then see how the religion that I established should operate, but it's not going to do them any good because I'm not going to help them. These things are meaningless. All the religious activity is completely meaningless unless you have a heart for God through Jesus Christ. God says they're going to ask him for mercy, but all they're going to get is his wrath. You can't pretend to be godly. You can't pretend to be religious and then pull a fast one on God. You can't pretend as if you're repenting and pull the fast one on God. Because it doesn't matter what the outward motions that you go through are. God knows better than that. He looks at your heart. Study all of God's word with me at the Scripture Verse by Verse website. And that's found at the thebibleversebyverse.com. To be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, pray for me and God's word. Do it right now while you're thinking about it. And write a note reminding you to pray for me again later on, whenever you see it, put it on your refrigerator door. That's a good place for it. Pray for Mike. Pray for God's Word. And don't forget to study God's Word with me because that's so important. That's how you draw closer to Jesus. That's how your faith is strengthened. So study God's Word with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com. When it comes time for a break, go to the front page, click the Donate button, Prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry. I appreciate that very much as well. Until next time, so long.